Well, here it is, my new three-wheeled scooter, and hopefully it's going to help me get around with this broken ankle. It came in this box, shipped all the way from the East Coast, and I'm going to bust it open now and see what we have inside. It looks like it's packaged well. There's a whole lot of zip ties you need to cut loose, and when you cut them all loose, you'll find a box inside, and it has this fourth wheel, a training wheel, if you will, and that wheel helps you to keep balance if you struggle with it. Here's all the parts that came out of the box. I see a handlebars, a couple of wheels for the back or front, and then you got a gooseneck that the handlebars goes into and a basket. Keep in mind, this seat is put in upside down for shipping. I like to lay all the parts out like I've done here and you can see individual parts and they will be named later inside the book. Um, this booklet will give you step-by-step -step instructions, but sometimes I'm a visual person and a video like this is nice to have. Don't let this throw you, but take a look at this seat. It's not assembled when it's set to you properly. They put it in there upside down so they can ship it easier in the box. What you need to do is take the seat out and then shove it in the other way. Now we're going to look at the front axle and you can see it kind of bows out if it's facing forward. That's the correct position. And if I move this from side to side, you can see this bow is outward and it slides back into the sleeve that has a similar bow. If you see these nuts and you have it arranged so they're upward, you're wrong. They should be going down. Now I'm going to take this and slightly move the wheels apart and then I'm going to lift the bracket from above. But before I do that, take a look at these two bolts. They have Allen heads and this Allen wrench can tighten them in to the holes that you will see just below. Now I'm going to take this. This is a little difficult. You see these four holes. I'm going to lift up the, the little scooter and set it down on these holes. I wish I didn't have a broken ankle while I'm doing this. It's kind of hard to balance. Now I'm going to take and line these up and when I get them all lined up, I'm going to just finger tighten them into each of the holes. I don't like to tighten all the way with the Allen wrench at this point in time. So I've got them right in the position I want them. Now I'm going to show you how to attach the tie rods. They come from each of the wheels. On one side it's square and that square hole will accept the square fixture on this bolt. On the other side you can see it's round. Now what we're going to do is take the bolt that will slide down through the square opening and below that we're going to add a washer. I don't think it's going to sit right here but I need a washer between that bolt and the black bracket that you see coming out. I'll slip that washer on, drop the bolt through the hole and after it drops through the hole I'm going to add washers on the bottom the first time I did this, I did it wrong. Under here, you can see there's one washer between the bolt head and the black bracket. But underneath, I'm just putting one on now because I didn't look at the directions very well. So I'm going to have to take this apart in a moment. Actually, you need two washers here below. So I'm going to go here and correct my error by taking these two washers and putting them over the bottom of the bolt and then tightening the nut on. Don't tighten it super tight because you won't be able to steer your scooter. I'm going to go ahead now and take my wrench and I'm going to tighten this nut. Now they supply you with a self-locking nut. It's got nylon on the inside of the threads and it won't come loose again unless you loosen it with a wrench. I'll tighten that up really quick and then we'll look here. We're looking down from where the handlebars are and when we look down we can see we have a quick release here and there's a little button you can push 
or you can put a thumb there and push to the left and that allows you to drop the handlebars down and when you do that after you release that nut it kind of locks it in place and then when you lift the quick release you can tighten it down now this came too loose so I'm gonna just lift it up again turn it clockwise a little bit and then push it down again because I like it to be real snug for safety Now we're going to put the handlebar in place and you simply slide this, we used to call them goosenecks, down into the handlebar stem. And notice there's a whole bunch of holes here and you're supposed to set it at a height that feels good to you. There is a nut under here and if you go in this back hole, you can go right through and just thread it into that nut and let me wiggle it around a little bit. Remember there's a hole on both sides of this tube so you have to line this up with both of them and I'm going to tighten it and I'm going to tighten it as very very tight because I don't want this slipping around at all when I'm moving. So that's in a tight position. Notice the brake is on the right side and I can tell already when I move this that I tighten that bottom nut too much because it's kind of stiff to move it. So I'll have to adjust that. They've made this basket super easy to install. You can see this square here and these two squares. This one slides into there while these two are sliding here. So it looks like the best way to do this is come in, catch it high, the, the two up here, and then catch the load one, push down, and they're locked in. Now we're going to attempt to put the seat in place. Make sure you don't do it like this, where the seat is pointing up towards the sky. You want to put it in so the angle makes the seat horizontal to the ground. And as you slide it in, you might want to adjust it several times to your height. But generally, you're going to want your knee to be at the same height as your other knee, which makes sense, doesn't it? Now, after you get it in there, there's a series of holes that go up and down the seat shaft. And what you need to do is line up those holes with the holes in the frame of the little tiny scooter. Then they'll give you a bracket that looks like the shape of a letter U. And you simply slide this through with the U shape forward towards the handlebar. And then when you get it in place, you can lock it almost like a safety pin. Then there's a quick release to tighten it and make sure you secure it really well so there's no slippage of that knee seat when you're scooting around on it. So you can see I'm kind of playing around with the tightness of the quick release and I'm trying to get it right in place. That seems like a good height for me. The tires come inflated with very little pressure, so I'm going to add some air to the tires. And I want to warn you about something. Take a look at this valve stem. It comes out of the tire at an angle. I didn't know that on the first tire I filled up. Generally, bicycle valve stems come straight out. And if you try to do it from the other side, you'll find that you can't get your pump connected that way. So remember, it's pointing out. The brakes here, you can see you can adjust them. Uh, make sure that they work properly. I had to little do a little adjusting on mine to make it in the right spot. And here I'm putting the lock on. This lock is easily put on and then you can snap it off just like I did. So make sure you understand how that works before you hop on your scooter and start scooting around. This little cable can be placed down below. There's a Velcro strap that kind of gets it out of the place. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it helps you in your future.